of the uh, pertaining to the first resurrection. And you know, this is a concept that many people are not aware of, the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. So uh, for starters, let us know, what is the first resurrection and you know, when is it or when will it begin? Well, the first resurrection is, uh, is what the scripture called it, the sabbatical uh, 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 thousand years, the sabbatical millennium. Uh, this is the time that the Messiah is going to reign on this earth for a thousand years. See, Satan was given 6,000 years to rule, rule the earth, and the Messiah was given a thousand years to, to rectify everything that Satan has set in place. So the millennial period, uh, as a matter of fact, when you get in the book of Revelations, I think it's Revelation 19, it was talking about the people that lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Well, that this is the part, period of time that's known as the, uh, as the millennium. So that would begin at once the Messiah is on the earth to reign after all kingdoms mm -hmm. on the earth have been put down. It, it starts the day that he returns. So how does it factor into salvation, if any? Well, that's what the salvation is all about. The Messiah uh, coming and saving his people out of captivity, mm -hmm. putting down all the power structures on the earth, and then uh, uh, setting righteousness in the land for a thousand years. That's, that's about what it's So about. you say this, this period of thousand years that's going to be established here on the earth, mm -hmm. well, that conflicts uh, greatly with the Christian doctrine of going to heaven. The whole Bible conflict with Christ Christian doctrine. Well, there's nothing the Christians talk about. I mean, nothing they do that's written in this book here. I mean, when they talk about going off to heaven and so forth and so on, that's that pie in the sky jump. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Right. The, uh, uh, the Adonai himself shall de descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to, to meet them in the air and so forever be with the Lord. Right. But he didn't say you're going to be in the air. See, this is what the covenant is all about, and, th and that comes from them not knowing the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Now remember when the Messiah was, uh, when he ascended, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the apostles were standing there watching him, and he said, you men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into the heaven? Mm -hmm. Say the same way he left is the same way he's going to come back with uh, 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 the clouds of heaven. Okay. Now, and Zechariah backs that up. Uh, we talk about the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It said, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and your spoil shall be divided in the midst of you. I mean, Zechariah 14, and uh, verse 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So we're talking about the Armageddon, right? Okay. Then shall the Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations, that's when he's fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall be moved toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azar, which is 20 miles from Jerusalem. Yea, you shall flee like as you fled from the earthquake 36 miles. Uh, uh, yea, you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and Yahweh my Elohim shall come and all the saints with him. Mm -hmm. All the saints coming with the Messiah mm -hmm. when he returns, right? Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known unto Yahweh, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Mm. So this is, what, this is what the scripture tells me, that when the Messiah returns, he's going to come to the Mount of Olives mm -hmm. and destroy the armies at the valley of uh, uh, Megiddo. He's going to destroy the armies and then take his people and set his people up in the land as uh, as uh, 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 as the servant. As a matter of fact, the prophet Isaiah told you, say, the Europeans is going to come bringing your people back up on sh uh, on, on mules, on leaders, on swift beasts, any way they can get them back up to the mountain of Jerusalem. Say, here, take your people. Mm -hmm. We've done your people wrong a long time, and we know that you're going to destroy us, so you take your people. Mm -hmm. So this is... Uh, this is basically what's going to happen the very day that the Messiah stands upon the Mount of Olives. Well, you know, uh, the first rec uh, resurrection implies that there's a second resurrection. Mm -hmm. Is there a second resurrection? Of course. The second resurrection is uh, after, 
Remember, Paul said he must reign until he put down all rule. Okay. Then after he put out, uh, down all rule, it's obvious that he is accepted who gave the Messiah that power in the beginning because mm -hmm. then everyone will worship a Yahweh in truth and in righteousness. Mm -hmm. We won't have all these idols and, and all these uh, uh, churches that we have spread all over the earth today simply because we know that the adversary devil sh set those churches up. I'll show you what I mean. Many of the churches celebrated New Year's. Hmm. They had uh, 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 a meeting at their church. See, December 31st, they had a meeting at their church, celebrate New, New Year's, right? Well, New Year's is commemoration of Janus, the two-faced to God that looks into the past and into the future. You see, now why would the church be celebrating that paganism? Mm. You see, this is what you have to it look at. Their spirit. Right. right. Well, they had just uh, celebrated the winter solstice, right. Saturnalia, right. which they like to call Christmas, knowing all the time that Christ was not born in the winter. He was born in the summer months. So what it is is this. Man is practicing a bunch of paganism that he brought over here with him. You see, and when you read American history, and, 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 and you can see just what happened. They had the Daniel Boone's, the Sam Houston's, mm -hmm. and, and Jim Bowie, and Lewis and Clark, and Balbo, and uh, Joseph Ponce de Leon. Those cutthroats came over here, man, and they, they took what they could. Mm -hmm. Then they sent Bowie and all those folks, Jim Bowie and, and all, all those folks, out into the Indians to live like the Indians, right? So they can learn the Indians' ways and habits and language and so forth. Then they brought the troops. Mm -hmm. And the troops were Christians, right? you see? So we know what that was all about. Big landowners from Europe, people of power, had, had uh, carved up this land here for themselves. But they had never been here. Mm -hmm. But they sent mm -hmm. their henchmen over here to carve this up and take this. We're talking about Christian folks now. Okay. And they took this from the Indians. Then they went and got them some slaves, right? Mm -hmm. And brother, we still in captivity. Hmm. But yet and still, we, we haven't recognized who our enemy is yet, see? We love everybody. Okay. So we haven't recognized who our enemy is. It's our enemy that's holding us captives, mm. you see? It's our enemy. It's the Christian, the Christian set up the government system, right? The Christians wrote the Constitution, okay. right? They set up the school system. They set up the law system. Everything that we got, that the, the Christians set it in place, right? But wait a minute. Why is there, if, if all of these, these things they did is so right, why is it that their judicial system is so snarled down? And why is it that they haven't sent us back home? The reason why they haven't sent us back to our uh, uh, ancestral home is because they set up some people over there in Israel calling themselves the Jews. But also, when you say that they are uh, carrying out the deeds of their father, the mm -hmm. adversary, mm -hmm. they have served the devil. Only because they know it makes sense. We know that things that are manifested in the physical plane is obviously beginning in some spiritual uh, in some spiritual realm. Right. Let, let, let me read you something that Yahweh had to say, and this is very obvious, and most people know about it. Hmm. It says, uh, uh, I'm going to read you some things here uh, uh, where Yahweh told our people, say, if you turn your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my okay. holy... Huh? 13? Yeah. 58, 13. Yeah. If you turn your foot from the Sabbath, mm -hmm. let me pick this up a little earlier than that so I can get a, 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 a good understanding. So we can get a good understand, uh, understanding. He was talking about the Sabbath. He said, is this such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, mm -hmm. an acceptable day unto Yahweh? Is it... Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you may break every yoke? Mm -hmm. Now, Yahweh gave us a Sabbath day. It was a day of rest, right? Mm -hmm. And he told us, say now, in, in verse 13, it says, If you turn your foot from the Sabbath, mm -hmm. from doing your pleasure mm -hmm. on my holy day, mm -hmm. and call the Sabbath to delight, the holy of Yahweh honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then shall you delight yourself in Yahweh, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of, of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of Yahweh has, has spoken it. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing that Yahweh blessed and sanctified was the Sabbath day. Okay. Now, in, in, in the New Testament, when Christ was, when he was, uh, was resurrected, okay. it said very early in the morning on the first day of the week, Sunday, what they, what they named Sunday. 
-hmm. They went to the sepulchre. He wasn't there. He had risen, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that uh, Saturday, what they call Saturday, was the Sabbath day, right? Sunday is the first day of the week, right? So they change it to the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no place in the scripture where it gives them authority to change Yahweh's law. But then they tell us, well, look, uh, 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 we're in the grace. Grace is not new. When you get back up and read about Noah, so Noah found grace. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Adam in the garden found grace. Yahweh told him, said, the day you eat of that tree, you're going to die. Right. He didn't die that day, did he? Hmm. Okay, so he found grace, right? It, our people found grace when he went down in, in Egypt and brought one nation from among another nation and set us up in our land. So grace was nothing new, but what Satan has managed to do is this. Satan has managed to tell the people, say, well, look, you don't have to do anything God say. All you got to do is just believe, and you're going to die. I mean, you're going to live, right? <laughs> right? Well, Satan believed. Right. And tremble. And tremble, right. right. So what Satan has managed to do is this. He's managed to take all of the things that Yahweh said to do out of man's sight, and now what do we do? We do what the preachers say do. Mm -hmm. We do what these different conferences say do. This is why they got so many different denominations, because they never could get them lies straight they was telling. And their problem is, uh, uh, as long as one Hebrew Israelite is alive, they got a big problem mm -hmm. because we know that the truth that's cast to the ground is going to rise again. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. when I first came to Atlanta, it was only two Israelite groups here. Hmm. Now it's about 15. Israelite groups are springing up all over the earth, simply all over the United States, simply because it's time for our deliverance. See, uh, we're going to be delivered. Uh, 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 they're talking about what the millennium is going to bring. The millennium is going to bring the one world order. Hmm. which the Messiah is going to bust up and it's going to bring about peace, the salvation of our people, and peace and prosperity on this so, earth. So that deliverance you spoke about, it will usher in the first resurrection. The first resurrection. That, that's when the first resurrection starts. Remember, uh, 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 I better read that. Mm -hmm. It's back in Revelations uh, 19. Mm -hmm. uh, Revelations 19, and I'm going to pick this up uh, at verse, uh, Revelation 20 in verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, and in Revelation 19 and verse 20, the beast, this last king, and the false prophet, this last pope, was thrown into the lake of fire, right? Okay. okay. And it said, and the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. So, okay, so the Messiah, this, me, this, this shows us that the Messiah killed off the remnant of that army, right? Mm -hmm. Now check this out in chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottom, to the bottom of his pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and kept him, cast him into the bottom of his pit, mm -hmm. and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nation no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And after that, he must be loose. A, a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua, and for the word of Elohim, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark in their forehead, mm -hmm. nor in their hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So the thousand years is the first mi uh, millennium. It's in verse 5, Revelation 20, verse 5, it said, But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were, for, were finished. Mm -hmm. This is the first resurrection. And see, what man is talking about going off to heaven and all that junk, that's not what the prophets had to say. The prophets had to say something altogether different. Hmm. Show, show you what I mean by that. I'm going to read something to you out of Isaiah chapter 61. Okay. Now, remember in St. Luke 4 and verse 16, the Messiah had, had just got his baptism from right. John, and he went up and he was tempted by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. And when he came back, he went into uh, 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 Galilee. And he went in the synagogue and stood up to read. And they brought in the prophet Isaiah, and he looked through the scrolls and found where it was written. And this is what he read. Uh, this is in Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meat. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, mm -hmm. and to open a prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our Elohim, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, 
to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. Mm -hmm. And they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. Now, this is what they don't want you to know. Hmm. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock. And the son of the alien shall be your plowman and your vine dressers. Mm. But you shall be named the priest of Yahweh. Men shall call you the ministers of Elohim. You shall eat the riches of the Europeans, and in their glory shall you boast yourself. Now, mm. he said that the children of Israel would be called the ministers of, of God, right? Mm -hmm. The children of Israel wrote the book. Mm. In the New Testament, the children of Israel went out and taught the nations, right? The nations talk about being saved and being in covenant with, with, with God, but God made all this covenants with one lineage of people. Christ's blood sealed up the new covenant with the house of Israel mm -hmm. and the house of Judah. It's written mm -hmm. in Hebrews 31st chapter mm -hmm. that this was going to take place. But the covenant is not written in the New Testament, and this is where people have fine, uh, 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 fine thought at. Mm -hmm. They go and spend $90 for a good book and then get to the back of it and read it and say, oh, I know what that's all about. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. This is why we have Baptists, Methodists, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Roman Catholics, and all that other junk them Europeans came up with, simply because it wasn't given to them to set up churches. Paul told them in the book of Romans, Romans 9, mm -hmm. Israel was given the covenants, the promise, the service, the giving of the law, all of the holy thing was given to the children of Israel. Why? Because we were raised up to teach the nations how to live. Mm -hmm. But the nation don't want to live in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's why they put us in captivity. So, so why then do you feel they uh, uh, invoking all these different spirits like Janus and some of the other constellations? I mean, were they giving these things to invoke? Let me read it. It's in the book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. It's in uh, Deuteronomy uh, 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 chapter 4. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, let me pick this up uh, at verse uh, 15. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Therefore take good heed unto yourself, uh, for you saw no man of similitude on the day that Yahweh spoke to you out of Horeb, out of the midst of fire. We the only nation of people that Yahweh ever spoke to. I mean, our people saw him in his clearness. Mm. A lot of people have a problem with that because the Messiah said, you have maybe seen God at any time, heard, heard his voice or seen his shape, right? Well, who was it the children of Israel saw when they was in the wilderness? See, that come from not knowing what the Trinity is all about. We get the Trinity from what uh, the Roman Catholic Church taught us. Hmm. Verse 16, Least you corrupt yourself and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Man, they had a cross with a man on it. Mm -hmm. See? And he said, don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we still got them, right? right? right. Okay. Uh, verse 7, Deuteronomy 4, verse 17, the likeness of any beast, that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. Brother, he said, uh, the likeness of any beast, right? Remember that mythology they gave us about pan, that half man and half beast? Mm -hmm. Now, where do you think we got that from? <laughs> we got that from the white folks. Mm. Right? Okay. Okay, uh, 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 verse 19, and least you shall lift your, up your eyes to the heaven, and when you see it, the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should be driven to worship and serve them, which Yahweh your Elohim had divided unto all the nations under heaven. He gave them up to paganism. See, that's why he told our people, say, you only have I known of all the families up there. See, this is why he said, I'm going to take you one of a city and two of a town, and I'm going to bring you back to the land of Israel. Well, why are we so inclined, you know, as a people to try to uh, latch on to all of the things that we know that are pagan, heathenistic, what have you, that Yahweh gave to the nations? Our people don't read this. Like I said, what they do, they go buy a Bible, and they read this much of it. See, they never know what Yahweh have to say. What they go by is interpretation that's passed down from conferences, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and what they preach you have to say. But mm -hmm. the scriptures say study to show yourself approved. Right. And this is what we don't do. We get in the New Testament and read stuff in the New Testament and try to verify things in the New Testament, but the New Testament is just a confirmation of what was said in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So what Satan has managed to do is this. Satan has managed to raise up 
ministers of the European persuasion. And, it was, and let's understand, the people that called the disciples Christians at Antioch, they were white folks. Mm. They were European. Mm -hmm. They call us niggas today. Mm. And a whole lot of other names, right? Mm. Where we don't go around and say, well, we saw and so do. Yes, we do. I'll take that. Well, you know, folks say they're Gentiles now. Yeah, well, that's because they never read Genesis 10. Je according to Genesis 10, only the sons of Yaphet were Gentiles. And when you get back and read Genesis 10 and read the sons of Yaphet and see the land, bring those names up to date and see the lands they inherited, they inherited all of Europe and Asia. Ain't that who run in Europe and Asia in the whole world today? Mm -hmm. Europeans. So, when you, so what signs or what did Yahweh give the children of Israel to say, this is when the year begins, or, or to let us know when these times begin so that we won't be confused and, and running after the nations trying to do like they do. Okay. Uh, now, according to, according to, to the book of Exodus, okay. we, came out of, uh, we came out of Egypt in the month of Abib, which is uh, April, okay? Now, I'm going to read something to you out of, uh, this is uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe and to Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. Now that falls between March and April. And it makes sense. That's when stuff starts to grow out of the ground. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So he said, Yahweh said, This is the beginning of month. So what the Caesars did, the Caesars changed the, uh, the beginning of the year to March, after the Romans purification month. March, March is one of the, Mars, after Mars, that's one of their war gods, right, right, right. right? You know, one of them planets up there, they god, right? right? Okay, then later on, they changed it to Janus, the two-faced the god that looks into the past and into the future. And that's what all the, the noise making, mm. the revelry, the resolution, black folks cooking black eyed peas and collard green for good luck, and asking God for blessing, and then turning around there Satan for good luck. Right, right, you right. see what I mean? All Follow of these things, right, right, all of these, I record it uh, 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 from, from from the satellite, I recorded all, uh, many of the uh, celebrations around the earth. And you know who they were showing, brother? Europeans. Mm. You know why? It was a celebration of their God, John. We just do it because white folks told us about it and let us do it. Same reason we uh, keep Christmas. You tell people, say, look, according to the Bible, Christ was born in June. Why are you celebrating in December? Well, this is the day that we set aside. I said, when that was done, you was a slave. Mm -hmm. The Roman Catholic Church and, and, and the uh, uh, Emperor Constantine and Pope at the editor of Milan, yeah. that's when they set aside December 25th as, as Christ's birthday. It had nothing to do with Christ whatsoever. It had to do with the winter solstice. But what they said mm -hmm. was, well, people are already keeping this day of, of Saturnalia, so what we're going to do is this. We're going to conquer this for Christ. We're going to incorporate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this with that pagan festival, right? Well, it's still paganism then, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Easter. What does a rabbit got to do with, with Christ? Nothing. Huh? It's a fertility sign. The rabbits multiply real fast. Mm -hmm. real fast. What does the egg got to do with Christ? Rabbits don't lay eggs. Right, right. And don't, I've never seen a rabbit carrying an egg. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've never seen a rabbit even eating an right, egg. Right. And look at the lie that they told us for years. Santa Claus is coming in town. He's going to come and bring you some presents. Now, the church tell that lie. The church even have trees and so forth set up in the, in the, in the church, and Yahweh Sell told them. them. Selling them, too. Right. right. And Yahweh told them, say, look, don't go in the woods and cut out that tree and bring it in the house and set it up and decorate it with gold and silver. Mm. But they do it anyway. You know what they say? Well, my mom and daddy did, so I'm going to do it. People don't do any research, so that's what the problem is, brother. Mm. That's what the problem well, is. Well, you know, as we see on the horizon the first resurrection coming to pass, mm -hmm. what need those who who believe Yah and trust in Yah and, and his Messiah, what should we be doing at this season? Well, what we should be doing, brother, is keeping Yahweh's law and teaching the truth to his people. See, our people don't know the truth. Mm. Our people don't want to know the truth because they want to be like master. See, if master fall down in the pit, they're going to fall down in the pit too. Show you this, show you that. World War I, we was in the war. World War II, we was in the war. Vietnam, Korea, uh, uh, over there in the Persian Gulf, we were in the war, right? And come right back home and still 
Uh, well, we did have to sit on the back of the bus uh, yeah. uh, uh, after the Civil Rights Movement, but came right back home and was still considered a second-class citizen. See? The man know that he's your enemy. We don't know it. See? Because he has everything, and we want to be friendly with him so we can get mm -hmm. the few crumbs that's falling off his table. I don't want no crumb. I want a whole pot. Mm. You see, so this is why me, myself, this is why I try to serve uh, 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 Yahweh in truth and in righteousness because I know that one day it's going to be a judgment. Absolutely. And Christ said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one joke and one tittle of the law until all be fulfilled and all has been fulfilled. Well, with that, we'll be right back here before we go into the round of world report. Greetings, this is Brother Maskeel Ben Yisrael with the Around the World News Report. At the top of the news tonight, the Prince of Magog steps down. Boris Yeltsin has chosen to resign after being plagued by personal health ailments over the past years. His successor, Vladimir Putin, who is heavily favored in the race for the next president of Russia, has already stepped up things in Chechnya, as well as reports of removal of certain people from his predecessor's corruption-tainted administration. Mr. Putin says, Russia needs a strong state power and must have it. Those in opposition to Russia should beware of the bear that awakes from hibernation. Also in the news, condoms or abstinence. King and leader Daniel Moe has said for Y2K, AIDS is the biggest human disaster since sleeping sickness left several, left several million people dead at the turn of the century. In a Kenyan nation of 30 million people, AIDS has killed 760,000, and the HIV virus has affected an estimated 1.9 million people. It has been, been reported by UNICEF that the number of AIDS orphans in Kenya could reach 900,000 this year and 13 million in all of Africa. President Mary went, excuse me, poor, President Mary met with Roman Catholic leaders to tell them God-fearing Christians who practice abstinence would not need to use condoms. Coming up later in the community update, the false prophet will visit Israel. Now here's Hadassah Israel with the community update. Thanks, Matt Skill. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Good evening. Why are people celebrating the new year? Is it really the beginning of the year, or is it simply the invoking of the spirit of Janus, the Roman god of gates and doors represented with two opposite faces? It's only been since the 16th century that January became the month associated with the beginning of the year. In 1582, Pope Gregory XIII revised the calendar and made January the beginning of the year after the decree of Julius Caesar, who stated that the year began with the 1st of January and not with the vernal equinox in late March. Many people will argue that they are not invoking the spirit of Janus, but there are many signs that speak differently. For instance, why do people make New Year's resolutions? This practice of reflecting on the past year and making plans for the new year is directly associated with Janus, the two-faced god that looks into the past and into the future. It is also customary for people to stay up until midnight to see the old year out and to ring in the new year. For Christians, this practice of having church service until midnight is called the watch night service. For others, they shoot firecrackers, shotguns at the stroke of midnight. Some people attend parties and other large gatherings. In Atlanta, thousands flock to the underground to watch the peach drop, and likewise in other cities like New York. Eating special foods such as black-eyed peas and collard greens and performing certain rituals like not washing clothes are associated with many other practices around this time of the year. All of this and for what purpose? To invoke the spirit of Janus, perhaps? You be the judge. Will you continue in this age-old pagan tradition of invoking the spirit of Janus, or will you follow the ways of Yahweh and celebrate the new year in the month of Abib, according to Exodus 12:2? This is the month that Yahweh decreed, at a time when things are blossoming as opposed to the dead of winter. 
This has been Adasa Israel with the Community Update. Back to you, Matt Skip. Thanks, Adasa. Tentatively, March 21st through the 26th are the dates set for the visit of Pope John Paul to the Holy Land of Jerusalem. Israel ambassador to the Holy See, A. Haroun Lopez says, undoubtedly, the most important part of the program is the Pope's visit to the Jewish memorial in which the Pope will pay respect to the victims of the Holocaust, an important step in alleviating Jewish concerns of anti-Semitism in the Vatican. A word to the wise, beware of the false prophets which comes to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Shalom. This has been the Around the World Report with Brother Maskeb in Israel and the Community Update with Hadassah Israel. Hi, welcome back to Signs of the Times. We're talking with the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov Ben Israel, and this is your opportunity to give him a call, 770-559-2999. That's 770-559-2999. Five five nine two nine nine nine. Also, let me remind you: when you call, speak directly into the phone and turn your television down, but so we won't get any feedback. Uh, we're talking about the first resurrection, and Elder, you you mentioned that uh, in preparation for such a major uh, uh, event that will take place in the earth, the sabbatical millennium, as you called it, mm -hmm. uh, people are needing to keep God's law mm -hmm. as well as. Um, just uh, in essence, watch the signs. Mm -hmm. Watch the signs that are going to be man manifest before our eyes so that we'll know that even so, that time draws near. Mm -hmm. What are some of the signs that will uh, usher in this um, first resurrection? Well, the sign that we're supposed to look for is the formation of uh, the 10th New World Order that would, well, it, it, it would be 10 kings. Daniel told you that it would be 10 kings that would come up and try to revive the Holy Roman Empire once Rome fell in 476 AD. Now, we know that Mussolini or Hitler, whichever one you, one you want to say, it was the ninth one. The tenth one is on the scene today. And the Messiah said, when you begin to see these things come to pass, look up for your redemption is nigh. Mm -hmm. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Mm -hmm. Then let them which is, is, is in Judea flee to the mountain, because there's going to be a time of trouble like it never was and never shall be. And But this is the time of Jacob's trouble, and he's going to be saved out of it. So we know to look for that, and we know also to look for once they in, install this king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, Esau is going to be doing sacrifice, animal sacrifices. Once that animal sacrifice began, then we as a people are going to be in big, deep, trouble. I mean, you can look out on uh, at our people today, brother, right folks ain't talking about nothing, they ain't doing nothing. I mean the common man, right. you still got that 10% that's out there making, you know, getting paid. But the, the common man, we're not talking about anything simply because when we do start talking, it's going to be about getting out of America. Well, we got four callers, Kenny, Linda, Andrew, and Octavian. We have them waiting. They want to talk about something. Let's see. Kenny, you're on. Go ahead. State your name. I mean, go ahead with your comment. Uh, hey, how you doing? Doing fine. fine, sir. All right. Yeah, so I ran across something in the Bible I was reading uh, last week, and uh, I just want to uh, uh, tell the people about it. Uh, you can hear. Uh, it's on, uh, I was reading uh, Ezekiel chapter 39, 23. Uh, uh, verse 23 and verse 27 uh, uh, it came to me that uh, a lot of people ask why we here and, and why we are more or less on the captivity to a degree by our mouths and I was saying they read those uh, verses they'll get a better understanding as which I was saying also that's the comment I want to make Okay, thank you for your call. Right, well, he spoke about Ezekiel 39, verse 23. Well, Ezekiel 39 is what's going to happen uh, uh, what's going to uh, happen once the Messiah returns to the earth. See, once these armies come up to uh, uh, to Jerusalem, uh, this is the, the biggest part of that army is going to be the Asian army. The army came from the east. 
Asia is in the east. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about Russia, China, Japan, and, and Taiwan, and all them other nieces and all those other folks over there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those are your Asian nations, and we know that the Chinese had the largest standing army today. Right, right. Right? So this is talking about that army coming up on the mountain of Israel, and he told them, so you're going to fall on the mountain of Israel. And he said, uh, uh, it's going to take it's going to be so many dead people kill off, people mm. kill off. It's going to take uh, uh, chapter 39 and verse 7. It says, And seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all the people of the land shall bear them, and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, uh, saith Yahweh. Mm. And they shall serve out men of continual employment passing through the land to bear the passengers of those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After seven months shall they search. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take... They're going to have so much war equipment, it's going to take seven years to destroy all of that war equipment that mm -hmm. they have, you see. So what, what Ezekiel is really talking about is the war of Armageddon. Ezekiel 39 mm -hmm. is the war of Armageddon. Now, for, for my brother's information, if he want to deal with the resurrection of the dead, okay. he need to go read Ezekiel uh, 37 chapter, which is uh, dry bones in the valley. Right. And, that, and when, he, when he read that, and consider what Christ did when he was resurrected, he came back. See, Christians say, we going off to never, never land. We're going to be spirits, right? right? When Christ was resurrected from the dead, he said, touch me, feel me. It's I myself. You got any meat? And he sat out and ate fish with them. They gave him some broiled fish, and he sat out and ate that fish. He told him, say, spirits do not have flesh and bone as you see me have. And he was the first born among many brethren mm -hmm. of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. See, Paul told them, glory and honor to the Jew first. Well, if the nations is going to receive glory and honor at the same time that the house of Israel did, then Paul told a lie. Hmm. Let's go back to the phones. Got Linda on the phone. Linda, go ahead with your question or comment. Yes, hi. Good evening. Good evening. And um, you've been talking about how we have time dated everything according to the Gregorian calendar. What I want to know is where do we stand uh, as far as scripture is concerned in, in, in the true sense of where time is and what, what year is it going to be in March, April? Okay, thank you for your call. Thank you. I didn't hear that. She was talking about the time and, you know, what, what time frame are we in uh, not looking at the Gentile system because they say this is year 2000. Mm -hmm. What's the true year that we're in? Well, look at it this way. Uh, they say the year 2000, but what they did was the Caesars added four years to your calendar. If you check your Bible, the first book date is 4004. It should have been 4000. Okay. So they added the four years in the beginning of time. So instead of, you, you still got to use that four years okay. that they added, you see. Uh, 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 so instead of, uh, uh, and then push, what, that, what else you have to worry about too is those leap years. Okay. See? And if you figure up your time from the time that they instituted the calendar up to the day, uh, up to at this present time, using that uh, leap year, you still got another five years that you got to add to it. So there are nine years in the calendar. Mm. But the thing of it is, is this. Yahweh told Abraham we'd be here 400 years. And if you check back in history from when the first, uh, and I'm not talking about the first indentured servants, mm -hmm. when the first slaves was brought over here, when you check back that time when the first uh, slaves was brought over here, we, we swiftly approaching uh, 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 that 400-year period. So let me ask a question, just follow up. Is it more important that we look for the signs more mm -hmm. so than? Than the year. Okay. Because man has confused the years. Okay. So what you have to look for is the signs of the time. This is why the Messiah told him, say, watch okay. as well as pray. Okay. You see, and what it is is this. People aren't watching because they don't know what to watch for because the preachers in the church is watching for their money, you see, right. but instead of watching for their soul. Like you mm -hmm. said, you feed yourself and you don't feed the flock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you get to talking about this new world order and see where we are as far as our captivity is concerned, you can very well see the churches aren't talking about these things. The churches think this is going to last forever mm -hmm. because Master told them that it was going to last forever. <coughs> Excuse me. But this is what they have to understand. America is kind of two-faced. Mm. She says, uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. stands. Right. But yet and still, they turn around and practice democracy. 
-hmm. Now, a democracy is nothing but a broken down republic. Mm -hmm. The earth always did better when one king ruled the whole earth. This is why, uh, I mean, the Europeans realize this. This is why they're setting up this one world order, mm -hmm. one king. Mm -hmm. And then this is why the Messiah is going to come back and bust all that stuff up and set up a one world order, right. one king. One king. Let's go back to the phones. Carla, go ahead. Andrew, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted some reflection. Can we bring it up just a tad? I, oh. just, I would like some reflection on the, uh, Islam. If you're speaking about the Christians now, Christianity. Uh huh. I would like some reflection on Islam. Okay. And where, okay. And where it, uh, is based in America now. Okay. Thank you for your call. Thank you. Brother, I think about Islam the same thing I think about Christianity. I think that's enough reflection. <laughs> Let's go back to we the We got that from the Arabs. See, yeah. we don't understand that the Babylonians came into our land in 606 B.C., but we don't do that research, and we don't know that they were Arabs that invaded our land. So as an alternative to, Christ alternative to Christianity, we grabbed on Islam, right? But we got that from the Arabs. And this is why we're changing our names to Arab names. Mm. You see what I mean? Muhammad this and Muhammad that, man. Everybody know that those were Arabs. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. We know they came out of Sea to Shem and that those were Arabs. But see, we don't do the research. And because we like that word of my thing, mm -hmm. right. then we go along with it. Like a brother called in and told me, man, you know, King James wrote the Bible and he was a homosexual. Why well, I care about what King James wrote? Well, he didn't write this book here. The Hebrews wrote this book. Mm -hmm. And if he did, he did write it. He wrote about that one world order that's going to come up. Ain't he, on the, ain't he coming on the scene today? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go back to the phones. Octavian? Uh, yes. Go ahead, sir. All right. How y'all doing today? Doing fine, sir. Okay, good. My uh, question, a couple of comments is... Uh, mm -hmm. Can we I'm bring it up just a tad? Okay, is that better? Yes, sir. Okay, I'd be glad when um, the whole world, like, look at each other like flowers, you know, because we're all planted everywhere. Um, I like for you or the other brother to talk about uh, what kind of role play that Russia and China are going to play just a little bit more. Also, um, that's I wanted to just hear a little bit more about um, just about the computers and uh, why. Uh, what was the big scheme behind the Y two K book? Thank you. Okay. He was asking about the uh, the role that Russia and China are going to play uh, in these latter days, as well as he uh, mentioned about this uh, Y two K computer book. What impact did it have, if any? Well, let's look, let's look at it this way. America is Russia's enemy. Russia is America's enemy. The Russians are Asians. America has fought war with the Japanese, the Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we can very well see that these people, look, show you what position America's in, Look who she's been borrowing her money from. She's been borrowing from the Asians, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Now, when the Asians say, well, look, give me my gold, and they haven't gotten any gold, what you think going to happen? Fight. It's going to be a fight. Right. It's going to be a fight. And America has to be destroyed. She has to be destroyed. Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51, Isaiah 47, Isaiah 18, Isaiah 13, is all about the destruction of America. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, is this. As far as this, this Y2K is concerned, what's happened so far? Hmm. Hmm? Nobody but the grocery stores and all them folks got rich, didn't they? I mean, they sold a zillion batteries, they sold uh, uh, generators, right, bottled water, went out to Cubs Food December 31st, brother, and the store was almost empty. Mm. They didn't have any noodles on the shelf. Mm. You see, so that's what Y2K has done so far. It fleeced the people and put Christmas just passed, right? right? right. They got rich off that, right? right? Then everybody got drunk and bought collard greens and black eyed peas and had pop bought all that champagne and booze and so forth. They got rich again for New Year's, right? Right. Well, you know, they say that the uh, Y2K bug never appeared. Of course it didn't. Let's what they keep telling me? What's that? Well, we have to wait a few weeks to see what's going to happen. Those corporate 500, let me tell you something, them people are going to keep their hands on their money. Well, They're going to be the we spent right. to, uh, trying to prepare for this bug that never appeared. Right. They upgraded all these lower systems, right? Farm, not them little folks, they didn't lead no more. The big companies started merging and so forth. The little companies, they started farming out those moms and pop businesses, right? That's what Y2K has done, and it's going to affect us the most. Let's go back to the phones. Marcus, go ahead with your call, sir. Hello? 
Go ahead, sir. Yeah, the, uh, if I could, the question I wanted to ask was, what is actually the uh, sign of the abomination of desolation that Daniel speaks about? Okay. Thank you for your call. You're welcome. Uh, the abomination of desolation, not only did Daniel speak about him, but the Messiah spoke about him in St. Matthew 24 chapter. Mm -hmm. And when you get in the book of Revelation, you're going to read about the abomination that makes desolate. The abomination that makes desolate is going to be this last king that's going to come up. That's going to run the, uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's the abomination of desolation. This is the man that's going to, this is going to be Satan's adopted son. This is the one that's going to cause us as a people to be, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go in the book of Revelations here and read something to you out of Revelations and uh, 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 maybe, maybe you can get a handle on, on what I'm trying to say here, my brother. This is in Revelations 12. Okay. And I'm going to pick this up. Uh, at verse 13. Now, when you get in Revelation 6 chapter and read the sixth seal, that's when Satan is thrown out of heaven. Mm. Okay? Now, I'm going to read to you what's going to happen when Satan is thrown out of heaven. This is in Revelation 12 and verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who brought forth the man child that was going to rule all nations. In other words, he persecuted the children of Israel. Our fathers brought forth the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. He was a Hebrew Israelite, right? Okay. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. In other words, during the great tribulation period, this is when the house of Judah, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> here in America is going into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause us to be carried away with the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now here, here is who Satan is making war with, and here is who the whole, this whole nine yards is all about. Mm -hmm. And when the dragon, and the dragon was wroth with, with Israel, who is the woman that brought forth the man child, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. Hmm. The reason why he's going to make war with us, brother, because he don't want this truth out there. Mm -hmm. He's been making war, but we're not a nation anymore. Half of 99.9% .9 of us don't know where we come from and don't even care. You see, so we can bear with, we haven't gotten the land, right? And uh, 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 even our neighborhoods, we don't have to ourselves anymore like we used to have. That integration took care of that, right? We opted for integration, right? Mm. So Satan, has, Satan went to make war with who? The remnant of the children of Israel who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, why would Satan want you to keep God's law? Mm. See? Right. Didn't he tell the people, say, you don't have to keep law? See, Paul said, you're not right. under law, you're under grace. Sure, Paul was sure. talking about the animal sacrifice. Show sure, even on turn. Right, right. <laughs> See, so uh, 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 this is who Satan is make war, making war with. Satan is making war with the children of Israel, brother. Somebody is making war with us. We can't even get together and buy a bag of potato chips. Right. And, we, and when we do get together, it's about a bunch of mischief. Y'all always say, don't go with the mob to do mischief, right? right? The whole civil rights movement was to be like master. Right. Okay. Right? And to do mischief. Okay. Let's go back to the phones. Caller, go ahead. We got Joe on the line. Joe, go ahead with your call, sir. Do we have Joe on the line? Okay. We're at 770-559-2999. That's 770-559-2999. We're going to try to get one other caller in, and after that, we only have about three minutes left. Joe, you want to go ahead? Uh, yes. Uh, my question for the elder is this. I'd like to... Uh, the elder to uh, comment on whether or not that most of our secular leaders and religious leaders, do they mislead the masses of black people on the basis of greed or is it just ignorance? And I'll listen to his response. Thank you, Joe. It's on the basis of greed, hmm. uh, basically. They've been deceived, man. Our, our leaders, if you notice, once, the silver, once Martin Luther King fell, our, our leaders wanted that money. They became mayors, governors, you name it, right? Uh, uh, making speeches at all the colleges and so forth uh, uh, around. They got off into politics. So they went after that money, and they left the flock alone because they didn't want to be associated anymore because the king, uh, 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 the king had been dead. But see, they should have known in the beginning that they could not learn the ways of strangers. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, 
uh, when, the, just when the Civil Rights Movement came, I was in the Black Panther Party. And our goal was to keep everything in our neighborhood. We wanted our own schools, our own hospitals, everything we wanted our own. This is why we ran loggerheads with, 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 with King and those people, simply because King and wanted, well, let's come together and give up our economic base in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We want to live up in Buckhead. We want to shop in Buckhead and so forth and so on. And look what it's, look what it's, look what it's done. The school system is in shambles. And our kids out in the street, man, running around like wild bulls in the china mm -hmm. shop. And we don't have any control over them. You know why? They took, first thing the Christians did was took, now this Christian country now. Okay. The first thing they did was took prayer out of school, right? Mm -hmm. Brother, Yahweh said, the stranger that live in your land, as you do, so, so shall he, he do. Right. And if he don't do it, kick him out the land. Right. Right. But see, America opted to downgrade that educational system, right? I and mean, look what it's led to. Now they got what they call zero tolerance in schools, right? Do you know zero? Man, God don't even have zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, the school system have it, and they're kicking our kids out in the street for any little infraction. Being late for school, 10 minutes, and get three-day suspension. What kind of junk is that? Well, let's, let's, we got about a minute and a half left. Let's let the people know where, where, where uh, we can be uh, located. With 3901A Covington Highway, that's Decatur, Georgia, 30032. Telephone number is 404-286-5869. That's 404-286-5869. There's a website located at www.thencci. Dot com. Also, there are classes that are held, and you can read the classes on your screen. Um, and also, once again, for those of you who would like to view the program, there are people at the congregation right now. The class schedule is on your screen right now, and for more information, 404-286-5869. Uh, once again, you've been tuned to Signs of the Time. We've been talking to the elder priests of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, and we look forward to seeing you next week live right here at Media One Channel 12. Good night. I'm Bobby Johanna Bath Israel, an Israelite woman who knows that continents and skin color do not depict my nationality. I am commenting on some of the ills that have been identified as plaguing our community. Although present in society as a whole, as most things, they seem to affect us to a greater degree. Broken marriages, neglected mothers, and fatherless children have torn our community, our family, asunder. I submit that these ills have contributed to the homelessness, addictions, and impoverished living that is highly prevalent in our family. I will even venture to say that it also contributes to the stress and disease which is wreaking emotional and physical havoc on us. After considering our plight, I have often wondered, what had we done that God has allowed all of this evil to come upon us? After seeking after him, I found the answer. We, the children of Israel, are the chosen and well-beloved of the Most High. That love has been defined in explicit detail in the word that was left for us by the Creator through our fathers, the prophets. We were chosen to be the example of how to live and love both each other and the Creator. Our forefathers failed at that charge, and we, their children, who are doing no better, if not worse, are oppressed as a result. We are a peculiar people who have become devoid of our identity, an identity that is of crucial importance to the entire world and has led us in circumstances that continue to plague us and society. While we await our redemption, we have an open invitation by the Most High to turn from our current ways and actions and govern ourselves by His ways. His laws, statutes, and judgments can guide us away from the evils that are tormenting us and bring us closer to him. I am Abigail Hannah Israel, giving you something to consider. Shalom. <laughs>